Hey everyone, Eric with Rockin' A-Chan. I'm coming live from the kitchen table tonight. In this video, what I want to show you is how to edit a file that you have, a 3D file that you want to use to print something. Perhaps you're not happy with it, and you want to modify it and change it. So what I have before me here are two Docker trailers. This is a Super B train that you might see in Canada or farther north in North America. And I've modified this file once because I thought I'd make it better, and then I didn't like it, so I put it back, or I modified it again, and I'm still not happy with it. So let's just open this up and, and get into it. And I'm using Tinkercad, which is a free program, and I have a couple more things about that once we get into this. So once you click a file, you hit Tinker This, and off you go. You're going to wait for the file to load, and then... So, I did not design this originally. I paid a third party to do this whole thing, and it was just good fortune. I could import it into Tinkercad, and the file was not corrupted in any manner. So, I was able to modify it and change it, and then not have any weird anomalies appear. I've had some other files I've tried to import, and they're a mess when they import, and it has to do with the original program that created the file. So whatever program created this particular file is friendly in Tinkercad. Okay, so what did I do? One, I went ahead and separated this tarp frame and had it printed separately. What was happening is this tarp frame would come in really warped and it looked terrible. So I took it apart, I separated it from the trailer body here, and then what was happening was I'd order five leads and five pups and I'd get four lead tarp frames and six pup tarp frames. The, mis the, the count was always off, <laughs> so, or seemed to be always off. It wasn't regular or consistent. So I thought, well, okay, I'm going to just put this back the way it was. And I couldn't remember how it was, so I put it back using my best judgment. Until I used this thing in this present design with these wires right here. These were horrible. This was a terrible idea. So this has been on my to-do list is to put this back the way it was and make it user-friendly for anyone that wants to buy a kit and put them together. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the entire object and I'm going to separate the pieces out because I grouped everything before I downloaded it. So I'm going to select this ungroup feature right here. Now you can see all the parts the way they are. You can see the tarp frame in pink, the body in gray, and then these orange yellowish looking pieces. I'm going to delete these because this is the part that's terrible. I'm going to highlight each individual piece and just hit the delete key. I'm clicking on it with the left mouse key and it's done. So now what are we going to do? All right. I'm going to come in here with a round wire or a round object, a cylinder. I'm going to make these 1.5. So you'll see that it defaults to 20 inches by 20 inches length and width and height. So you can see the height, length, and width. You can come in here and just simply type in your key, T type in the, the specific size you want, and then it resizes it. You can use these little boxes here to resize it manually. I just find it's a lot faster for me anyway to do it this way. I'm grabbing this little cone up here and that's how I'm dragging this up and down the plane. And then I'm using my um, arrow keys on the keyboard to actually move the object. Now I used 1.5 as just a starting point so I'm going to see how well I like this. and okay so I don't want this cylinder right here I don't want it to come out the edge of the tarp frame like this this isn't good so I do want it right about where it's at it's just a little tall so now I'm gonna move that down a little bit but then and I'll show you right here see how it comes out the bottom here. This was 20 millimeters long. We're going to make this 
a lot shorter. Let's we're gonna start with like five and see where this gets us. Now I'm gonna zoom in. If you have a mouse with a uh, a wheel like this, you just toggle that thing and zoom in like I am doing here. Okay, we're gonna make this a little longer yet. Let's try six. Oh, went the other way. I'm gonna move it. Okay, I gotta move this around so I can get to my cone. Oh, that was too much. Okay. So, how do you know that this cylinder is in the tarp frame? Here's an easy workaround. Highlight your tarp frame, then use this hole button right here. You can see it's orange here, and then it gets dark. That means it's actually inside this part. So we know that it's attached, so it won't be loose or skew when we get the product. And then you can do the same thing with the trailer body or whatever object you're working with. And you can see too, again, you can see again that we have a dark ring down here, which means the rod is going into both parts. So they're connected. And then you can change the colors back to anything you want. Instead of pink, let's turn, we're going to use blue this time. Okay, we're going to flip this around, and then I'm going to show you something really cool with Tinkercad. And I'm sure all um, 3D programs have this feature um, in some capacity, but this is how you can make complicated things look really easy. It's just really cool. I mean, it's simple. It's like copy and paste on in Microsoft Word. I highlight this rod, and I hit the copy or duplicate feature, the repeat feature, and then I'm just going to move this rod over a few spaces. I'm going to 1, 2, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. Now, I've moved it over 20 millimeters. And actually, I'm going to do it 10 more. 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. So there's 30 millimeters distance between the two. Now I'm going to hit this repeat feature. And look at that. These are all 30 millimeters apart. That is so cool. And you didn't have to make any guessing or anything. I'm actually going to move this one, one, two, three, a little bit away from the edge. And the reason for that is, is so when you cut this wire away, you can get a knife in there and scrape any residue off or anything that might be in the way. Okay, now that we've made a duplicate of that, we're going to duplicate some parts again. I'm going to hold my shift key down and I'm going to left click on each one of these rods. I'm actually going to make these a group. So now all of those rods are one piece. I'm going to hit the duplicate feature and now I'm going to use my arrow key and just move them across. just like this and that is pretty darn good I'm happy with the way they're spaced because there's no exposed rod on the outside edge or the inside edge of the tarp frame <clears throat> so the reason originally there was only one two three wires holding this tarp frame on the uh, on the trailer body well this time I'm putting two more in there and that way hopefully it won't warp so bad during chipping I'm gonna highlight the entire project here I'm gonna hit the group feature 
and it takes a few seconds for Tinkercad to catch up and make it all one piece. Now I'm going to export this trailer and the, kind of the universal language as I understand it in 3D printing is .stl file extension. You're going to select .stl and then it's going to download and off you go. You're all done. This is one way to f modify your 3D files. If you learned something, please leave a comment, share it with someone else, be a blessing to them. Thanks for watching.